hello guys how are you i guess you are fine so um my lecture today is physiology of the ovaries i've decided to record this video for the sake of those who might not have access to power 24 hours so this is a pre-recorded lecture so we're looking at the physiology of the ovaries my introduction is as follows the ovaries are paired reproductive organs which are located in the female pelvic cavity and they are responsible for producing ova and secreting hormones such as estrogen and progesterone and also inhibiting. They consist of an outer cortex and an inner medulla, that's their structure. The outer part, the cortex, and the inner part, which is called the medulla. I'm going to show you later on. Processes happening in the ovaries include eugenesis, which is the main one involving the production of eggs or ova, which occurs within the ovarian follicles. And with each menstrual cycle culminating in the release of a mature ovum during ovulation. The ovarian hormones regulate the menstrual cycle and support pregnancy and influence secondary sexual characteristics. So, estrogen and progesterone, these are crucial for preparing the uterus for implantation and maintaining pregnancy. Okay, so that those two hormones, they are under the control of the hypothalamic pituitary gonadal axis. Hypothalamus is in the brain, same applies with the pituitary. So that relationship is called the hypothalamic pituitary gonadal axis, which regulates their function through hormones like follicle stimulating hormone and utilizing hormone. So I've put this in form of... Uh, objectives okay and so that we deal with these objective one by one so these are basic it's a basic science physiology so we need to understand the basic information so that when you do your midwi midwifery your pathologies and all those aspects in the clinics you'll be able to appreciate our phys basics so the objective number one those are the objectives show structure of the ovum size of ovary mesovarium the two portion of the ovary the geminal epithelium and primordial follicles so i'll start with the, the structure of the ovum and then compare it to the sperm okay so the the ovum is one of the largest cells in the body approximately 100 to 120 micrometers in diameter that's a structure 100 to 120 micrometers and it is spherical in shape okay but for the sperm cell this one it is 50 to 60 micrometers so we've talked about this the size now the shape the of as you can see here This shape is called spherical shape. But this other shape of the ovum, I mean of the sperm, is it's a streamlined with a distinct head. It looks like a, like a neuron. But it has a head and a tail. A tail is also called a flagella. What other structural differences? Cytoplasm. Okay. For the ovum, the cytoplasm is abundant. There's a larger space for the cytoplasm. It is rich in nutrients. It is rich in organelles. And it's able to support early embryonic development. Actually, in the cytoplasm of the ovum, uh, it has the MRI, mRNA, which is uh, messenger RNA. This one, it helps to initiate protein synthesis immediately after fertilization, before the embryonic genome is activated. So these proteins are needed for the cells to divide, 
they are, they are needed for differentiation purposes and formation of early developmental structures. So this is just uh, one of the importance of the cytoplasm of the ovum. But for the for the for the for the sperm cell, it's minimal cytoplasm designed for efficient movements and delivery of genetic materials. Okay. Uh, let's see. What are, what other structures can we talk about? The protective layers. Okay, the, we know that the the ovum is surrounded by this zona uh, perucida which is a protective layer, but in the sperm, the one that very much does the protection, the acrosome at the head contains enzymes that penetrate the protective layer of the ovum. Okay, so this is just some of the differences between the sperm and the ovum. So we are talking of size of the ovum is 100 to 120 micrometers and the shape is spherical. And also the structure of the ovum, you can see there is a, there's a V-line membrane there. There is zona pellucida there. And there is per, per line space. And there's also corona radiator. Maybe I may say something about the corona radiator. Okay. This one is the outermost layer, which, comp which also has what you call the granulosa cells. Okay. The corona radiator is very important. It provides nourishment to the, to the ovum. And also it helps the sperm to penetrate during fertilization and then this other one is called the perivit line space okay are, are, you, are you able to see the perivit line space so this space it's uh, it's between the the plasma membrane and then the also between the zona pellucida okay so it's just a gap a space and usually fertilization events occurs within the perivit line space. Okay. And then the cytoplasm, I've said, it contains nutrients. It contains organelles. It contains mRNA. The other objective is called what is the size of the ovary? Let me see what is this. What is the size of the ovary? I've already mentioned it is 100 to 120 micrometers. And those are the structures. So objective, this one is done. The other objective is number two, which says what is the mesovarium? What is the ovarian ligament? Mesovarium, let me show where it is. That's their mesovarium and the ovarian ligament. These are structural support. Okay. Structures that support. So we can see, like for example, the mesovarium there. This one, we can define it as a fold of the peritoneum. It's a fold of the peritoneum. It connects the ovary to the uterus. And then the mesovarium also helps the attachment of the blood vessels it helps the attachment of nerves. It helps the attachment of lymphatic vessels, which supplies the ovary. Okay, so we need the mesovarium, very important structure. Example, the uterine branch, which supplies the uterine branch, the ovarian branch of the uterine artery. It helps, it, it helps to hold this artery okay and then the other one is the ovarian uh, ligament this one i've already said it is also called utero ovarian ligament it's just a cord as you can see there it's a cord that connects the the ovary 
to the uterus. Okay, so mainly it's for support. It's mainly for support. It secures the ovary to the uterus and also provides stability during movements. Objective number four, the two portions of the ovary are the medulla and the cortex. What's the function of these portions? Objective number four. Okay, that's a medulla. And this one is the cortex. So there is no distinct border between ovarian cortex and medulla. In the medulla, we have blood vessels. We have lymphatic nerve fibers, smooth muscle fibers. It's the middle part. It's also called the neurovascular structure. Okay, neurovascular structure because it has nerve cells and blood vessels. That's why it's called the neurovascular structure. So this one, the medulla is the, it's a middle part of the artery. And what do you think is the function? Because of the presence of blood supply and nerve supply, we can say, number one, the function of the ovarian medulla, it's vascular supply. Okay. Provides nutrients, oxygen supply, and removal of waste from the ovary. Remember, ovary, it's a functional, functional, structure it performs function so it needs blood it needs oxygen it needs to get rid of the waste the other function of the ovarian medulla it has uh, this is where we find the interstitial cells that contribute to the production of uh, androgens which can eventually turn into estrogens and finally, the function of the medulla, it is it helps in structural support to the ovary because it is made up of loose connective tissues. Okay. And then the cortex. The cortex, this one, we can say it's in the outer part of the ovary. It has connective tissue and it has interstitial cells. So what are the functions of the cortex? This is where we find the ovarian follicles, which are at various stages of development in the cortex. So contains ovarian follicles, which are at different stages of development. If you're wondering what is a follicle, a follicle is just a small fluid filled sac in the ovary that contains the immature egg so the ovum is found within the follicles okay the ovum is found within the follicles so there are thousands of follicles in the ovaries and all these over all these follicles inside they contain the ovum okay so just want to emphasize this point so the cortex, it has follicles which are at different stages of development. So this is where you're going to find primordial follicles, primary, secondary, and mature follicles. What else? Within the cortex, you're going to see that there is hormone production, specifically estrogen and progesterone. Okay, when well, I'll show you the structure of the ovary, there is the granulosa cells and the thicker cells which produce estrogen and progesterone. Although the progesterone is produced after ovulation by a corpus luteum, by a transformed follicle. Okay, to prepare and maintain uterine lining for possible pregnancy. Okay, so this is the 
function of the medulla and the cortex of the ovary.